Welcome to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. Today is Sunday, February 17th, 2019. And I have a very interesting show coming up. Well, not that interesting, but anyway, it's all about love and do's and don'ts and where you, how you get there and how you end up not in love anymore. And it's a bunch of different information, but we'll get to that later. I think first, we really need to send out thanks, not only to our listeners, everyone that's in the... Um, I'm not even sure. The DS, DNS Playhouse, um, we have Emma and XPD, and um, we have Sarcastic and Spooka and Austin7. Oh my gosh, yeah, you're back to visit us. So that's all really exciting, and we have an orange, a Dr. Orange, which I really like oranges, and it makes me want to go eat one, but I'll do that after the program. And we just have a lot of fun people joining us today. Before we start, we should really thank Trev. He set up the bot, and he it's a thing, and he fixed it into our room, and he's got the, play, the station playing music 24-7, and he did a lot of very hard work to make the station more enjoyable for everyone, so a really big thanks needs to go out to Trev, and of course, another big thanks needs to go out to Kiss King for starting the station to begin with. And then we have our DJs, Trev, and we have Pixie the Pirate who comes on, and I'll have to look up her schedule, and DJ Yitzi who comes on every now and then, and so we want to give out a shout out of thanks to them as well. Now, I had some issues with my cars last night. I was supposed to go off to a party, but didn't quite make it, so there I... I have my show still together because I had my guidelines for the show. Um, next week, we're going to be having Jillian Keenan on, who is a spanky. She's an author. She writes articles, and I believe she gives lectures as well. So that's going to be fun and exciting, so you want to tune in for that. Eventually, I have my show that I did a couple weeks ago, and I was having technical difficulties on the radio, but it's about um, hysteria and women and the vibrator so I'm gonna get back on that but not for a couple more weeks because I'm gonna be mixing that in with a medical show which I had to go to the doctors and because they were violating me and doing tests and grabbing stuff up in my vagina and so I helped myself to a couple doctor devices which will be in one of our giveaways when we do the medical show and one of them is a um, catheter but we got a couple other little trinkets in there. And you know how to enter the you know how to enter the um contest. Just write into Slave Nation Radio at gmail dot com. Tell me what you like about this show. You're entered to win. It's that easy. And it's one entry per show per person, not per household. And you can also enter if you come in before the giveaway date. And you can enter if you're listening on YouTube. So, And I want to thank all our YouTube listeners. Our numbers are getting higher and higher there. More and more listeners. And it's really exciting. Now, as for our topic of love, not in love. You know, there's all different types of love. You love your family, the friends. And you have that special love. The person you're in love with. And love can be sweet. It can be bitter. It creates a feeling of euphoria. Or it can also create deep melancholy. It can send you into a deep depression if it's not returned. If, you know, it's it's not a healthy love. And then you can also just get into that depression because you're an actually depressed person. But that's a whole different topic. And so, you know, you hit your highs, you hit your lows. Um, with patience and com commitment, you can conquer most problems that come up. Or can you? Do you love with all you have? Do you become vulnerable? Is it a risk of being hurt too much for you to deal with? There's always a risk when you are in love, with, but the other person also takes, takes the risk. So you have to remember that. That's important that because sometimes you feel like when you're in love, will it not be returned? Um, am I putting all this effort in for someone who doesn't care about me? So those are things you need to discuss. And remember, the other person is taking a risk too. And they're putting in their time and their emotions into you. So they're, they're vested. And the, re the rewards certainly outweigh the risk. And 
Love can make us feel like we're irrational. It can make us feel out of control. But it also can make us feel safe, content. It can make us feel wanted and a place where we belong. So love can be very complex, yet very simple. And people have been discussing love for centuries. Um, I'm going to get to the definitions of love. They've been seeking it forever. It's it's poems are made from it, songs are made from it, books are made on it, movies. Everyone is searching and craves to be loved by someone. So we're going to touch on that. And right now I'm going to go over and I'm going to give you the definitions of love. Now I went to Merriam-Webster and looked up love. And it says now, definition of love. Strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Attraction based on sexual desire, which I think is more of a lust than love. But lust and love can often get confused. Affection and tenderness felt by lovers. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest. An assurance of affection. Warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. Um, okay, the object of attachment, devotion, admiration. A beloved person, darling, often used as a term of endearment. Um, British, and it says number two, British used as an informal term of address. So we have to throw that out for all our friends over at the, on the other side of the pond. We also have unselfish, loyal, and benevolent. Concern for the good of another, such as the fatherly, fatherly concern of God or for humankind. Brotherly concern for others. A person's adoration of God. A God such as Cupid or Euros or personification of love. An amorous episode. Love affair. There's still more. The sexual embrace. Copulation. A score of zero as in ten. Why would they even sneak in tennis and love? I mean, really? Okay, capitalization, Christian science, God, at love, holding one opponent scoreless, and they keep bringing up tennis, no one wants, it. tennis is so boring, the only thing that made tennis exciting, and some of you listening may not remember him because you're too young, but John McEnroe, he would get on the tennis court, and he would throw these tantrums, and throw his, his fits, and throw his, his, um, those things you hit the ball with, um, the racket, oh my gosh, it was hysterical. That was the only reason you would turn into tennis was to see John McEnroe. Anyway, it, in love, inspired by infection. <clears throat> then we have love, the verb. Loved, loving. Definition of love, entry 202. To hold dear, cherish. To feel a lover's passion, devotion, or tenderness for. And then it has part B, caress. To fondle amorously to copulate with to like or desire actively take pleasure in to thrive in to feel affection or experience desires and so you see in love is so complex yet so simple it also has synonyms nouns affection attachment devotedness devotion fondness passion and then it has synonyms Synonyms for verbs. Appreciate, cherish, prize, treasure, value. And then it has antonyms, noun, abomination, hate, hatred, loathing, rancor. And you know, it's often said there's a very thin line between love and hate. Um, antonyms, verb, disvalue. And so um, it's, it's just a really vast t topic and people can talk on it forever. But right now, what I did in my playlist is um, I found some songs, of course, and some of them are not really love ballads, but some of them are, and some of them, it's it's all, but I also have love poems in here. I have different, um, I have people talking about their success of their marriage for 70 years. I have just different things um, that are twisted into love. But right now, I'm going to go to a couple songs, and I will be right back. And I hope you're enjoying this love episode.
people love them anymore. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. Um, I forgot to give a, a shout out. I believe I did because I always forget things, but um, that doesn't diminish all the great work he's done and appreciation that I have for him. I want to give a shout out to XPD, who's done so much in promoting the Beaten Path and all our shows and finding new listeners. And for the listeners that tune in, um, you have to admit he's done something for you to try to bring you some entertainment that you will find interesting and tantalizing to your ears. So, to XPD, thank you so much for all the hard work you've done. Um, you're very much appreciated, even if I forget to thank you. It's in my head, but I need to make sure to make it a point to let you know. So, thank you, XPD, for all your hard work. I also want to give a shout-out to my friend Lawrence and my other friend Oscar, who are so supportive of me, always checking in on me, and listen to the show and help me with different things. Thank you so much. Your friendship means a lot. So, there we go. And Austin7, too, you're always so supportive. Um... I, I appreciate it so much. So much I can't even tell you. So we're going to get it. It's a day filled with love. It's very exciting. And thank you, Spooka. You're a star, too. And you make the, the show fun. And thank you for always participating and showing up. Okay, so now on with the love stories. Um, There's so much that goes on. I mean, I, I, when I was doing this topic and I'm writing my notes and I'm thinking... And, and all and as I'm thinking along, it's like there's, you know, the slave between just a vanilla relationship and there's, you know, parental love and there's, you know, the love for your family and just your friends. And, and more questions came up and more answers I um, thought, so I'm going to bring them all to you. Now, since we're hitting on the topic, um, we're going to hit this one again. And we've discussed it before, but, you know, we get... New, new listeners and we have old listeners and it's always good to brush up and, and talk things over again because often your ideas and your opinions change. So we're hitting the topic on is love needed in a BDSM relationship, an MS relationship, a DS relationship, how the dynamics contribute to a healthy, successful relationships or do they make it a little more difficult? So we'll start at the beginning with a BDSM relationship. Now, if you're simply um, playing with someone, there doesn't necessarily need to be love, but there does need to be a rapport there. There does need to be some liking of one another. You do have to trust this person because many of the activities we do do take some risk. They're, they're risky. They're dangerous. I mean, the, even the simplest people think, oh, bondage, you know, you just throw some rope on and you tie them up and you, you, you're you done. But if you're not careful, as, you know, many of us old timers know, you can damage ligaments, tendons, nerves. I mean, it's, so it's not just as simple as grabbing your rope. It's not just as simple as paddling someone on the butt because, you know, you break a blood vessel, you bruise them too harshly, you hit them the wrong way, you know, it's disaster can happen. And this is with a lot of things we do. So there does have to be a rapport, trust. Um, there has to be something there before you go into that um, play session. Um, don't, don't just jump in with someone you don't know. Get to know them talk things out, your likes, your dislikes, and if you're feeling any hesitation, your inner voice is speaking to you, listen to it. Listen, because we have that, um, you know, our nerves get on edge around certain people. We we get around certain people and we, we either immediately like them or we do not um, feel comfortable around them. And it's something inside of us telling us it's our internal alarm system. So listen to it. Because the most important thing to do is keep yourself safe so you can live to play another day and get a few bruises and welts. And then, so you know, that's just if you're playing, if you're going to a play session. Love is not really necessary, but a, a good bond and like and um, fondness is. 
If you love that person, you have a good friendship with them, all the better. The more you trust the person, the better the play session will be. The quicker you'll get into subspace, the, you know, the quicker they'll get into top space. You know that you're in a safe, comfortable place. So, that is very important. Now we're going to go over to a DS relationship, a master slave, Mr. Slave. I, I know I forget, you know, you, you male submissives and you, you know, female dominance, but it's not that your, your positions are not valid. It's just that when I'm talking, I'm talking from the position of a slave, a female slave. So kind of lump it and switch it around to your own dynamics. With, you know, your kink may not be mine, but what you do is not my business anyway. So, with a master slave, Mr. Slave, you know, a dominant, a submissive, there still doesn't need to be love. And sometimes there isn't. Um, a strong relationship, a good friendship, the trust, um, you know, loyalty respect there's um so much you need you need to have that in the relationship you need to be loyal you need to trust them you need to be honest you need to work hard to do your best whatever position you're in because you're both relying on each other to come out with a positive experience you're both relying on each other to make each other feel better feel happier and in, and I know they say do not re keep you know do not rely on someone else for your happiness and that's true you're just relying on them to enhance it to take it a step further because happiness really comes within and once you have that happiness within and you find someone who enhances it that is a special really special thing and you don't want to mess that up so with that being said you don't need love in a in a dominant submissive master slave mr slave relationship love does intensify it and i've often you know i've talked to many masters who have said that being in love with their slave or their submissive does make it harder for them to discipline it does make it harder for them to be strict because they they look at them and but they remember their position is to guide to structure and to discipline to help make the slave submissive the best she can be but they often find themselves going a little soft and wanting to let it slide much like a parent does you know we see our children tear up when they've done something wrong and we want to go oh okay you know I know you're sorry but unless we reinforce what what you have done is wrong there are consequences when you do something wrong then we um we set that person up for failure because they will continue to do the wrong things so you have to be the master has to be strong even while in love to enforce this guidance to help make his slave um stronger now spooka says and Spooka is one of our listeners in our chat room. And I have posted that in fact. Gotta have love. And she says, for me anyway. Or at least deep feeling and trust. Can't just let any play with me. Or it's not going to be enjoyable. And, and I think that's important. And I think a lot of new people come into this lifestyle. And they're so anxious. And they're so eager to get started. And that's where a lot of the pitfalls come. Where we find people who are getting hurt. And they have problems, you know, they don't want to proceed in the lifestyle because they've jumped in too quick. They didn't know what questions to ask. And they played with these um, men, and I wouldn't even call them dominance, but these men that prey on the new new people knowing they can twist it. If, a, if you were a real sub, you'd want to do that. If you were a real slave, you want to do this, you know, and manipulate them. And... I've said this before, we are not responsible for other people, but I believe that when we reach out to new people in the community and we help guide them to be the best they can be, um, we're doing a service. We're, we're doing a lot to make ourselves 
look like responsible people, but we're also doing the right thing, and it is in a way <laughs> another form of love. We we love what we do, we love the people around us, we love our community, and we want to help represent represent it and do our part in it. So that's that's another thing. And Austin says, I have in the past had plate partners I didn't love, but I had respect for them. Without honesty and respect, you can't have anything. And that's very true. And, you know, honesty is too. And this is where some subs and slaves and um, I guess you want to call bottoms have a problem is because we don't want to disappoint our dominance. We don't want to disappoint our masters and we don't want to disappoint the play people we're playing with. So some people hold back and they don't tell them the truth and they also fear punishment. But remember, you have to be able to tell your master. You have to be able to tell your dominant, the person you're playing with, what is going on, regardless if you think it's going to hurt their feelings or make them upset because you have to be able to have that open communication. Now, I'm not saying, you know, be rude or disrespectful. Um, but, you know, tell them. You, if they're caning you and you say, you, you hold that thing like a baseball bat and my butt's not a baseball. Um, that's probably not the best way to go about it. But you, you, if you don't like the way they're caning you, you say, you know, when you came me, I'm I'm very uncomfortable, and it's it's not an it's beyond not enjoyable, and it scares me. You're respectful. You're open. You have to be able to convey these things, and that was just an analogy. So I want to welcome Topless Girl. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you will enjoy our show. So um, and then Austin Seven figures up fi finishes up with. However, if I have a partner I love, it raises everything to a new, higher level. And I think that's what we all hope for. Because when you do have the partner you love, everything is so much more intense. Everything is like a whole new picture. You see things you haven't seen before. They may have always been there, but it's like you didn't notice them. It heightens. It's more intense. So... I'm going to stop for a bit, and I'm going to go to a couple more songs, and I, I really do hope you're enjoying the music, and um, the little, you know, poems and other things that I've, I've put in here for you, it's, anyway, it's, it's some different stuff that I found, and I hope you're enjoying it, and I'm so glad you're all here with me today, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. I hope you've just loved that 40 Love Leathers. When I heard it, I was just cracking up. Things like that just make me laugh so hard. So we just heard about songs and about, you know, getting your name back and unrequited love and when things just don't work out. So now what do you do? I mean, okay, we're going to hit the topic on a DSMS relationship. But, um... What, what do you what do you do when you hit a problem? Now what? Your slave doesn't obey. What do you do? Your master is not understanding what you're trying to convey to them. What do you do? There's you know problems come up, and one of the things is you know, we've all come across these people that have unrealistic expectations of an MSDS relationship. They think it's all whips and change and sex. 24 7 and they don't realize that people still conduct their family lives they still have work lives they have you know um obligations in their community they go to church they you know volunteer and there's so many things that happen and it's really i mean it's just an added dynamic to an already vanilla relationship because you're never going to get away from those vanilla activities. It's an unrealistic thought. You're not going to be able to keep your slave caged 24-7. It's unrealistic. You can't have her crawling around the house <clears throat> on her hands and knees 24-7 naked and never going out. It's unrealistic. Unless maybe you're a millionaire and, you know, you don't have to work and you never want to leave your house again and you, you don't have any 
family obligations. You don't have any community obligations. You don't have to go to work. You don't have to do anything except for monitor your slave at home who's naked in a cage. But that, that's unrealistic. So how do you deal with these issues when they come up? I mean, you have to have that commitment. Um, one of the questions is, is, if your slave is not obeying, why? You have to sit down and discuss it. Why is she not listening? What is going on? What is the problem? And when she's trying to tell you what the problem is, are you really listening? Are you really understanding? Is is Because sometimes it's very hard to describe what is going on in your head, your thought process. It's It's very clear when you're thinking it, but to get it out verbally is very, very hard. So one thing is, as slaves to help keep our connection of love strong, to help keep our bond strong, to help keep the communication open is <clears throat> a lot of slaves journal. But you have to think how you can better get your point across, how you can communicate better what is going on in your head, what is the problem in your, in your having in your everyday life. I mean, everything can be perfectly okay, but we're talking about when problems arise. What do you do? Well, first of all, you have to be able to communicate to your master what is going on, what is making you feel hesitant not to obey, where, where the problem lies. Now, I, I know the right thing to do as a slave is if your master gives you an order, if your dominant gives you an order, go do it. But sometimes you're like, wait, this 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 feels wrong and you have an uneasy feeling in you so this is something you should be able to communicate with your master your dominant talk to them about it say you know sir please you know I'm having a problem with this and this is what is going on this is what is bothering me about it this is what I'm not feeling comfortable with now you're not always going to get okay well you know we're going to go slow and do it this way you might just go okay I hear what you're saying I hear you have a problem I hear that you're uncomfortable but what I'm telling you now is go and do your tour go and do your task and when you're done come back to me you may get that and then it's time to go ahead and do it and usually you'll talk about it afterwards um, and Austin 7 says to listen properly properly is the hardest skill a dominant master has to learn and he's correct that is a hard skill for the dominant master to learn and it's also hard for the slave because they have to learn to listen properly too we also have to be open to whatever experience our dominance masters are giving us we have to be open we have to trust that they have our best interest at heart that they're not going to leave lead us to the wrong place. So when I come back, we're going to discuss this more. How do we get our points across? But I have a lot of good songs, and I know <laughs> all of you that tune in are really thrilled that I have new songs and different ones and different types of music, and it, it, it progresses, and it gets a little more friendly than my first few angry songs. So we're going to go to the next couple of songs and we'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. So we're going to continue with our love and what to do. And we were talking before we went to a break about communicating, how to get our point across, how to listen. Listen is just something, there's no real instructions. You just have to really sit there and take in what the person says. Um, it often helps if the person knows they can come to you and not be ridiculed, not to be made to feel less than, not to be made to feel their point is invalid and what they have to say has no value. And that comes with that's just something you have to learn to do. Now you may not like what they say and then it's your turn to communicate how you're feeling about what they have brought to you. Now one of the hardest things is getting your points across. 
So I have a couple ideas, and you can take them or leave them. But it also ties into one of our future shows we have coming up. Now, next week is Jillian Cannon, who's coming on, the Spanky author. And we're going to be talking to her about what she does and why she likes spankings and her favorite kinds and all that good stuff. But that's next week. But the the show I'm talking about that I'm preparing is I'm going to be um, getting a list together of information. Oh, and now the word just went right out of my brain. Um, oh, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, you know where where you can find things. Um, oh. Now, see, you can't even communicate this to you. Well, anyway, one of my <laughs> resources, a list of resources. There we go. Now, so, and you're probably wondering, well, what does this have to do with love and your communication and all that? Well, part, communicating is very hard. So one of the things, like, you may not be able to find the right word. So you find, what you can do is you find a similar word and you can, you can, um, Go to a dictionary. You can look up ways to present your your problem, your complaint, your your fear, whatever is going on with you that you need to convey to the person you love, to the person you're involved with, to your master, your dominant. You can look up ways to do it. Um, you can go to like um, psychiatrist links, and they they'll have they'll have ways to present what you want to say without being angry, without being accusing, without, you know, making the other person that you're trying to tell them how you feel, feel bad about the way they're feeling, feel bad about the way, what they're doing, because we're all just going along trying to do our best, so when we talk to each other, we don't want to hurt the other person's feelings, so one of the ways you can do that is you can look up, you know, different, in the um, psychology, psychologists, websites will have ways and exercises to present what you want to say in a non-confronting way, in a pleasant as possible way without making the other person feel bad. Now with the dictionary, because sometimes we don't know what words to use, but we have words that are similar, and they always come up with it. They have a little, you know, Merriam-Webster's and dictionary.com will always have kind of a a thesaurus, like when I read to you earlier about the definition of love, they have other ways to say it. They have other words, and you can usually find your word that way if you're not having the right words to get your point across. And another suggestion is when you're communicating and stuff, is often if you're both overly emotional, if you're both upset, take an hour or two or even a day. Don't, you know, you don't have to go to sleep on each other, but let each other know that you're going to discuss it later when you're both a little more calm and a little more rational because often when we're worked up and we're upset, we can't convey exactly what's going on. And sometimes when we're so upset, we say mean things that we don't really mean, but we can't take them back at a later time. Um, you know, and... A, a slave can get punished for this, but um, then when you punish your slave for, you can punish her for being disrespectful, but you have to be able to let her express herself. Otherwise, communication starts breaking down. And I know it's a really super hard thing to do. And, and communication is one of the hardest things because... As a slave, you have to be respectful to your master. You have to convey things in a respectful place. But slaves are also human. We have tempers. We have feelings. We have emotions. And, and plus, and I know this is an unpopular view, but as women, we are actually hyper-emotional. We're, you know, we can blow things out of proportion and get very upset. I know I'm going to get blasted and say that's, you know, a stereotype and, you know, what, you know, women have come a long way and blah, blah, blah. But this is my opinions and you are all welcome to your own. So that's just part of what I'm, my thinking's on the communication. Um, so, um, we're going to continue on. I have more songs and we have 
it's just an endless topic. So we can talk for a long time, but in, I really did work hard on this songs because I know everyone hates my music. So we're going to continue on with some music. We have more poems. We have more um, people talking on love. And I, I just hope you really like it. And we'll be back in a, in a few minutes. On Earth. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. And that was a little clip that it was secret to successful 70 years marriage life. And you had some elderly people talking about their marriages and stuff. And while they were vanilla, I think they were more BDSM based. Because back when they started, it was where the man went out and the woman stayed home. And it was really very head of household like. So, you know, back in the traditional times, it was very... Um, there was a master-slave, a DS dynamics, because the man did rule the home. And I know not everyone is on the the man being dominant and the woman being submissive. But again, it's coming from my point of view. So it was very traditional, head of household, um, taken in hand. And that could be while there was... Their marriages were successful because they did have that dynamics there where one led and one followed. And each person knew their place. And of course, you know, they, they did have good communication. And that's what makes a good good love relationship is the, the communication, the loyalty, the trust, the openness. And um, it makes it beautiful. It's really a nice thing. So, we also have comments going on. We have that um, stereoty stereotypes abound in BDSM because I'm very, you know, opinionated in things. And um, is saying that part of the issue is too many think they must be brutal to become a master. And that is an issue, but... I, I think these are people that have a distorted view. They've just read smart, small snippets here and there. Or, you know, they've read the, the Shades of Grey. And they have not really taken the time to realize that there is a commitment. And there is a lot of love and caring that comes into being a master. Because you are in charge of that person. And you do set the rules. You set the tone. You set the pace. And, um... It is not all beatings, whips, chains, and cages, as we discussed before. And then um, XPD says, there's no one set way. Everyone's BDSM style is different. And that's very true. And that's, that's what makes this um, lifestyle so fun and so exciting. And then when you engage in conversation with people who are of different opinions for you, and you can have a civil discussion without getting hot under the collar and irate thinking that your way is the only way it's really um exciting and it is fun and and interesting to meet different people and hear their different opinions and if you're open to it you can learn things and you can take what you want away from the conversation and leave what you don't want you are not under any obligation to think their way is the right way and they're under no obligation to think that your way is the right way so that's nice and xpg says you know saying there's no one and there's everyone's bds style and there's books of um standard operational procedure which he explained is sop abbreviated so thank you for that xpd so and there are books and we will be listing these books when we come up with our, our show, it's not the next show. And maybe three shows down, two or three shows down, we're going to be listing resources. And one of the thing about resources is, too, if you're in a relationship, and we do do things that leave bruises, leave welts, sometimes leave cuts. And that's up to the person just because you don't believe in breaking the skin. And I'm not saying breaking the skin till they're bloody and stuff. But, you know, some people like doing scarification. Some people like doing knife cuts. Everyone likes doing something different. So part one of the, some of the resources that I'm going to be finding for you is because you do come up with welts and bruises and cuts and scrapes. And different things happen when you are having a play session. 
And they're not brutal. They're not um, abuse because both participating parties enjoy this. And it, it is another form of expressing our love because, you know, often masters will um, reward their slaves. The dominants will reward their submissives with a play of their choice. You know, they may not be into canes. They may not be into paddles and spankings, but they do it as a treat for their submissives. So often you can go out to a doctor or a therapist or someone who is going to see these bruises, welts, cuts, whatever you have going on on your body and they may think you're being abused when you're not. So there are doctors out there and there are therapists out there that are kink friendly. So that's going to be part of our um, resource list that I'm going to be looking up for you. Now I understand they're in different areas but often you can find them on the internet where they list you know like they'll have California to New York and in between and you they'll have different therapists and doctors and everything that are kink friendly if you must go to one and you're ill or whatever's going on and they don't think that you're being beaten and abused they understand the whole dynamic but with with you know 50 shades has been damaging but it has also contributed to a little more acceptance of what it is that we do so it's it's kind of like a double-edged sword now um austin seven's also saying it would be boring to have an off-the-shelf sub and that's true and the nice thing about when you have the love there and you have the open communication and the trust is the dominant is free to mold his submissive his slave into all the things he needs and desires now if one of the things is um you can have a good friendship absolutely love is not needed to have a slave or a submissive but when you have that love there when you're loving and caring and you care for her and you you um protect her and caress her and make her feel loved at home and at ease a slave and a submissive will develop a deeper need a deeper desire to serve you to put that there's already that need. I know it sounds bad. Without the love, we can't serve. But we can serve. But with the love, when we feel cared for, when we feel protected and cherished and treasured, we have this deeper need to serve, this deeper desire to please. And we feel more free to give our all. Because no one wants to serve a mean beast. We just, we just don't. You know, if we have a good friendship, of course, you know, we do it at home when we have guests, when we have our friends over. Um, I'm not sure how it goes for the master or their dominant, but you know, as a slave, when we have our friends over, we want to see to their comfort, their care. You know, do they have a nice cool beverage if it's hot? Do they have a nice hot beverage if it's cold? We give them a comfortable chair in it to sit in. We make sure, you know, they're fed and we stimulate their mind with good conversation. and. The, the more you care about someone, the more you want to see to their comfort and happiness. And it's just human nature, and there's not a lot you can be do about it. And I, I know you don't really need to be in love to serve, but the love sure intensifies things. So now we're going to go to more songs, more poems, and all that other stuff. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Crying. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path, and we're discussing love. So one of the things, too, is we're talking about, and they're talking about their broken hearts and all that. One thing you never want to do is take the love you have for that person and use it for a weapon. Um, if you love someone, make sure not to take advantage of it. Um, if you know someone loves you and you don't return their feelings... Let them know. Don't lean them on. Don't string them along. It's it's not fair. It's not decent. You don't have to hurt their feelings. But you can tell them quite simply you're not interested. You don't return their feelings. And that way they're free to look for someone else. And that's, that's um, a very important thing because you, you don't want to hurt someone that cares for you 
and I, they're, obviously they're going to get hurt that you don't feel the same way about them but it's not right to string them along it's not right to use them it's not right to know that they love you and call on them only to string them along when they could find a happy life someplace else they can find someone that will return their feelings that feels the same way about them now if you're honest with them and you let them know that you don't return their feelings you like them as a friend you enjoy their companionship and you enjoy their company you enjoy all things about them you just don't have that feeling of love or lust for them if they choose to, to stay around then that's their choice but at least you're not leading them astray you're not leading them on you're not giving them false hopes that something will be more than what it ever more than friendship you're not telling them that if they stick around they have a chance you're letting them know that all you have to offer to them is friendship companionship and you know friendship and companionship should not be undervalued either the love you have for a friend can be very deep <clears throat> the, the care the commitment you have to friends is also very special um, I have many friends that I love deeply and I value their friendship so that should not be overlooked either that um, the love for friendship is very very powerful so let's talk about nice things you can do to celebrate and show your love for your master or your slave um, you know serving a master is not all sex serving a master and showing your love for him is not all play is not just letting him tie you up and beat you and bring you to orgasm having a nice conversation can be serving your master when he comes home from a long hard day of work just listening to him when they're troubled hearing what they have to say shows your love and your concern and your appreciation um, you know on birthdays you make his favorite meal give him a back rub um, make sure that you know he has clean clothes laid out and a nice hot bath ran and then he can go watch his favorite television program or sports event and just pamper him in little ways it doesn't have to be grand over the top sometimes the smallest things that we do for someone are the most meaningful I I remember back when I had my master and this was probably one of the best gifts I've ever received in my whole life and it probably cost him under five dollars now with my old master we used to like to go fishing and um, those of you that know me I'm I'm not a jeans and t-shirt type of gal I don't really you know I'm not really an outdoorsy type but we really had a good time going fishing and we'd go fishing and he'd read me a story and we'd have a couple of you know drinks you know some sodas and our lunch and we'd talk and you know occasionally we might get a fish and, and not too often but we had a good time but you also know I'm not a big sun fan I do whatever I can to protect my skin I don't like to get sunburnt I I worry constantly about getting over wrinkled and we were going fishing and getting everything ready getting our lunch ready packing our drinks and he's getting the fishing poles ready and the the worms and that little blow up thing and he brings out a present for me and he's like I bought you a present and I was like okay and I was really really excited and I opened it up and it was sunscreen on a keychain because he knew how much I worried about the sun and it was for sensitive skin too because every a lot of stuff irritates my skin and he bought me a sunscreen on a keychain so I always had that sunscreen with me I feel like I something happened and my friends popped by and we went out for the day I had it right there and I could put it on my face and put it on my hands and I didn't get all pruned up from the sun and it was not an expensive gift but it was a very very thoughtful gift that I would always have sunscreen on me to protect my skin because he knew that was important to me so you don't have to have 
over the top things because sometimes the small things are over the top. So that sunscreen was really one of my fa most favorite gifts that I ever received. And <clears throat> you can do things that are small like that. You know, um, when you pack the lunch, put a little extra snack in there that you know is their favorite. Um, write them a little note. I love bedtime stories, so when my when my master, old master, would read me bedtime stories, I would just fall straight to sleep. I just love them. So little things can really, you know, um, push it over the over the edge. I mean, little things make the difference. It's not the big things. It's not, you know. Sure, every every slave loves jewelry. Every slave loves, you know, a nice perfume or you know, something that's a little more costly. But we also like the little things, you know, oh, I know you worked hard all day. I know you spent hours doing dinner. I know you um, cleaned the house and did my laundry and ran my errands. And, and now, you know, you're rubbing my feet and you're, you're serving me my meal and stuff. Go ahead and leave the dishes to the morning. Sometimes that can be a really treat. And some people are like, oh, I don't want to wake up to messy dishes. But sometimes at night you're so tired, you don't want to do the dishes. You know, rinse them off, leave them in the sink, and take care of them in the morning. Little things like that really matter. It shows that you know the person put in a lot of work. You know the person went out of their way to make you a special meal. You also know they're tired. And that little extra relaxation in at night really matters. Things like that can go a long way. Making a little call in the middle of the day to say, Hey, I was thinking about you and just the thought of you made me smile. Showing appreciation doesn't have to cost you money. Showing that you care doesn't have to cost you money. So make that effort to let the person know they matter, they count, they're special. You appreciate all they do for you. It goes a long way and everyone wants to be appreciated. Everyone wants to know they're loved, they're cared about. Everyone wants to know that their efforts did not go unnoticed. We don't need to be praised constantly. I don't expect to be praised constantly. And I know masters don't expect to be praised constantly. But letting them know that you know what they did took thought. That they were thinking about you. That you know they put a lot of thought in what they did. That they cared enough to do that for you. To let them know you appreciate them counts. It, it goes a long way. To know you don't take advantage of them, that you, you don't expect all these wonderful things they do for you, that you know how special it is. Everyone likes to be appreciated. And sometimes that can make a really bad day great. Sometimes we just have off days that are really terrible, really horrible, and really bad. Just just let them know it'll pass that can, that can change the whole thing to feel appreciated is something important so I'm going to go back to a couple more songs and then I'll be back to talk more about love and how we can show the people in our lives that we appreciate them how we little things we can do and then there are big things too but I mean the big things are Big things are nice. Everyone loves a big bouquet. Everyone loves a nice fancy dinner. But they're easy. Sometimes they're not easy to come by. I mean, sometimes you don't have a lot of money. But they don't take as much thought as the little things. You know, making sure they don't get into um, a cold bed. You know, if you live in a cold area... You could go, you know, get an electric blanket, make sure the bed's nice and toasty warm when they hop in. Little things like that. They don't cost anything. Except for a little time, a little thought, and a little effort. And that means a lot to a lot of people. So we're going to go back to a couple more songs, and then I'll be right back. 
welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. I just love that. That cracks me up every time. I called him his name, Hugo. What a bunch of sweeties. I was getting those clips, and I just love, you know, um, our elders, our senior citizens, can give us so much advice, so much sound advice, and have so much wisdom. Some of them are still nutbags, but I, I did... Um, like that very much listening to all the seniors giving their words of wisdom so we're going to continue on with our talk of love BDSM and master slave relationships dominant submissive relationships now you know we were talking about ways to make your master or slave feel special just attention does it for both and you know Masters, everyone always thinks of masters, and of course this goes for mistresses too. They always think of them as these strong, rough, tough, um, very, I'm looking for the right word for it, just sound. But mainly because they are very strong and dynamic and just they appear so powerful that sometimes it's overlooked that they also have this very soft, caring, nurturing side that also needs to be tended to. And I'm not sure if everyone notices is this about the masters, and I, I'm not very sure how it is with the the do, female dominance, the mistresses, but they also have they they really do have it's they're very caring, very sensitive very nurturing and um, they have a soft side of to them but this should not be confused with weakness I think this is part of their strength that they do have the ability to show empathy to show softness to show tenderness and caring um, they're just they're very wonderful so don't for, don't forget to let your emotions flow and to show them tenderness and caring and, and lovingness and um, be sensitive to their needs because often with them being so strong, you can forget that they are very sensitive and they need that affection just as well. They need to be told you care about them, they're wonderful. They're, you notice all these wonderful qualities about them. And to overlook that, um, it's not that we're being insensitive overlooking it, it's just sometimes we're just in such awe and amazement at what a wonderful, well-rounded person we have right in front of us and that we're so fortunate to have them in our lives we forget to convey that message. So, so when you think of these things, you know, one of the nice things you can do is when you think of each of these wonderful things, write it on a little piece of paper, shove it in a jar, and after a month or so, hand that jar on over to your dominant, to your master, your mistress. They can read all these little thoughts that go through your head daily, weekly, monthly, Read them and know they're appreciated. Know that their efforts do not go unnoticed. It's it's little things that um, really make it. And you know, your slave likes to know they're doing a good job too. Not being punished. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not enough. We appreciate not being punished. We love not being punished because we know we're doing something right. But also being told kind of stroke you know we have little eagles there egos there as well it kind of strokes them so everyone wants to know they're special we've already talked about being honest be loyal be trustworthy work hard do your best what if your best is not good enough what if it's just not good enough we're going to go to a song and when we get back we're going to talk about if your best isn't good enough what do you do
left in our mind. Back to Slave Nation on the beach. <laughs> you know that. That's why we're here. Um, okay, we're, now we we're discussing what if. Uh, I bet you got a fortune cookie, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what it said? That would be. What if oh, the best is oh, no, not going to happen? No idea what well, that is. Well, first of all, you need to decide. It's just, this is just something you're thinking in your head. Because we all have a tendency to be our own worst critics. So we're thinking, oh, I didn't, you know, make the bed right. I didn't, you know, I didn't get up on time early enough. I, everything, we tend to think that everything we're doing is wrong. So we need to really take a close look and evaluate. Are we putting our best effort in? Are we doing our absolute best we can? Or can we do better? Now, if you're still struggling to figure this out, um... You're probably not going to get your slave or submissive coming up in, to you telling you, you could do better, you're not doing your best, you're being a real jerk. You're probably not going to get that. But you can always go and check in with her and ask how things are going. Um, a lot of times, masters and slaves, dominant submissives, they set aside time where they can just sit and talk and see if there are any problems that one thinks is there or the other thinks is there, how they can improve things, things that went right, things that they didn't think went right, sit down, discuss it, and go from there. If you think as a slave or submissive you're not doing your best, always go to your dominant and master. Ask them, you know, I, I did this. I didn't think I did my best. I put a lot of effort into it. I really, really tried. Do you think it needs improvement? If you think it needs improvement in yourself and you're not sure how to get there, ask your master. Ask your dominant. Um, they're really good at solving problems. They're really good at coming up with solutions to help you improve yourself. The better you are, the better you are to serve them. Ask them. They will help you. They always help you. That's what they do. They're good at it. They want you to be the best. The better you are, the better you are for them. It's it's really a, a circle thing. So, um, and if you go to them and you ask them, am, am I doing things right? Am I being good enough? Is there something you want me to do better? If so, how can I prove it? They may just say, I think you're doing a grand job. I'm perfectly happy with your service. I'm perfectly happy with your company. I'm perfectly happy with our relationship. They may be quite content with you exactly the way you are. And chances are, if they're not happy with something you are doing, they are going to let you know. Um, but if you're not, if you, you feel like you're not doing your best, ask them. And that's the best. Of, and it goes back to our open communication. Talking. Telling how you feel. It's not really a hard job. Um, communication really is the key in every relationship, be it vanilla, master, slave, dominant, submissive, mistress, slave, whatever your dynamic is, keep communication in, open, anything can happen. Everything's possible. Now, you know, I was thinking too, was, um, and this is just a whole, whole other topic, but you know, with the holidays being here, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day, New Year's. We get flooded with all these holidays. And sometimes when we're single, we have an extra feeling of emptiness, of loneliness, of wanting companionship more than usual, of needing, feeling we need that significant other in our life, feeling we need someone else. And I wondered... Do people ever go out, they meet someone very quickly in this situation because they're caught up in the holiday hype of wanting that someone there with them to attend the parties, family functions, everything that goes on, having that special someone to celebrate. Do they ever call her a slave in haste? And I thought about this and it probably does happen that you get caught up in the hype and you're all in a whirlwind and you have this feeling of, oh yes, finally I have someone and we're doing all the holiday stuff and I have someone for Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's Day and I don't have to ever go on that picnic alone. And so you call her and then you start thinking, 
this this is not the slave that's for me. What do I do? Or you accept the collar in all the hype. What do you do? Again, it all comes back to the same thing. Communicate. Sit down. Say, I'd like to have a talk to you. If you're not happy in that relationship, if you think you've made a mistake, let them know immediately. Don't let things go and go and go and string the people along. You never want to string someone along. Think of how you would feel if someone strung you along. We've, we've all had that person that led us on. And the people that tell you they have not, they're not telling you the truth. We've all had that one relationship that just, you're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Why was I with that person? Value yourself and value the other person enough not to make both of you happy. Love yourselves. And in a way, if you let that person go and seek someone that can make them happy, that is showing your love and respect for them. So, and you know, that may not happen. But I can see where, you know, people get caught up in the holiday. They get caught up in something. And they're in this, um, and I read about it before. They called it a sub-frenzy. A sub-frenzy. And they get all caught up in the lifestyle. But this is mainly for beginners. But when you've been looking for a while too, you can get caught up in that frenzy and go, oh my gosh, it's the one, it's the one, it's the one. And you're just so caught up in having, being collared, being, having a master, having a dominant, that you lose yourself and you lead them astray. Don't do that. At the worst, they walk away being really agitated. At best, you still have a really good friend on your side. And that's, that's something to be cherished and nurtured as well. We have um, more things to talk about. Um, when we come back, does love really conquer all? And, we're, and, and then after, we're going to go to a couple songs. Does love really conquer all? We'll talk about that when we come back. And more songs. You are part. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. Oh, it's been a good night. So, does love really conquer all? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. It, it depends on if um, both are really in love. Do you both cherish and work on what you have? And then it also depends on um, your honesty and trust and what you have done. Have you cross the line? Have you crossed boundaries? Have you done something that is just unforgivable? If you're not in a poly relationship, have you cheated? Have you lied? What have you done that cannot be conquered? Um, so it, it, there's plenty of variables. It just depends on the commitment level. Um, some things just aren't forgettable forgivable some sometimes you both just have to walk away and cut your losses um some things are small and some things are large and it just depends on the person um it's something again communication talk about what are your um deal breakers what will make you walk away from a relationship and never look back and then go from there. And it comes back to your be loyal, be honest, be trustworthy, work hard, do your best. Um, but sometimes with other people, your best is not good enough. Sometimes they just don't like who you are. And you have to live with that and go on. So it's, um, it's, it's, there's no one answer does love really conquer all I would have to go with no um, I have to go with no love doesn't conquer all but it does conquer quite a bit you do have on your love blinders where where some things would just annoy the heck out of you that one person it's it doesn't matter you just what they do is is good so that was a, a short little <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing big to talk about there. I mean, it's up to the individual. Um, and what it, it depends on what the crime, if you want to call it that, the crime, the offense is. And is there anything that they could do that is that bad? Um, it's, it's up to the individuals. When we come back, we're going to go with You've been looking and looking and you still cannot find the right person. Now what? How can you find the right person? Do you even know what you're looking for? And then we'll discuss that and maybe we'll all find the right person. It's It just depends. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path and that is Lou from OneRuleSuperseeds.com and he does he's the inventor of the me line so go check him out at OneRuleSuperseeds.com he has some really cute stuff and I have his ask me t-shirt and then I wear his stickers all the time when I go out to any functions they're really cute anyway so and who does not love micromanagement excellent musician excellent creator now we're going to go back to our topic of love and we were discussing so you've been looking and looking and you still can't find the right person so what do you do well first of all you need to decide what you're looking for because if you don't know what you're looking for in a person you can't find it now you're not going to be able to put a list on, I want him to have blue eyes, I want him to be 6'2", I want him to weigh 200 pounds, I want him to have dark brown hair, I want him to be muscular, I want him to be a doctor, I want him to drive a BMW, I want him to, um, you know, be smart, I want him to be funny, I want him to have a really good smile, I want him to have a great sense of humor, and you can't, that's, that's a good start. But what if you find this guy who has the most spectacular personality? You laugh, you click, you know. He has a great smile. He's kind to you. He's, you know, a good person, a good citizen. He's, you know, he's he's a good provider. He's, he's you know, an all-around great guy. But he's not 6'2". Are you going to throw him to the side? Don't be set... Don't be so set on, he must have all these qualities. He must have, because you're never going to find someone. You're never going to find someone like that. If you find a person who is a good, law-abiding citizen, has a good heart, is a good person, is good to you, is good, you know, to people he meets, is kind to, you know, the people who are in sales, you know, he's just a gen, genuinely good person. Don't overlook it because of some ideal you have, some idea of the perfect person. Give them a chance. Take the chance to know someone before you start judging them. You know, all, and now if he just absolutely there's something that drives you buggy about how they look or just something in, in in their personality just tips you over the edge then obviously I mean we all have those knee jerk reaction but if you're talking to the person and you're getting along well and you, their personality sparks you but they're not exactly what you think in your mind is what you're looking for don't drop them give them a chance don't have a laundry list of must haves that's a mile long keep it simple keep keep your mind open to the possibilities you never know what can happen so now you know these are the things I must have and these are the qualities that he's been to jail a dozen times nope that's not the person for me you know he he does drugs nope I'm not doing going to give someone who does drugs that's acceptable you know that's um he likes to beat up on small children. No, that's not the type of person you want to have in your life. And we get that. But if if he's not what you know, what you, you look at him and you think, oh well, you know, I I want someone out of GQ. 
that has the personality of a saint that's a bossy pants. You got to keep it realistic. Just because he doesn't look like he's out of GQ. And then what if he does come along? He looks like he's out of GQ, but he's the biggest jerk in the world. So, you know, be open to some flexibility on your on your list of what you're looking for. So now you know what you're looking for. You want a good, decent guy who is a bossy pants. And again, we're going from the slave's point of view. So you guys, you guys want a good, decent gal who will listen to you. There we go. Where do you find this gal? Well, we, we, we know some of the answers. And we're going to find other places you can find them. But um, we're all on FET. We're all on caller space. So we have people that are like-minded now. We have a big group of people that are like-minded. Once you found someone that you think you might click with or whatever, you, you can't just keep it. Well, you can if you guys want an online relationship. That's great. But now you found this person you click with. Set up an in-person meeting. Or you still haven't found that person you've been talking to and you click with. So, what do you do? Find events. Go to events. Go to munches. Go to parties. Go to um, seminars go, or um, demonstrations. Get to know people. If you don't get out there, if you don't put yourself out there, you're never going to find the person. Sure, you may meet, meet people and it won't happen. And you just, you know, you go out on a... And, and you know what? They, everyone says, you know, being a master slave is not dating. You know, DS is not dating. But you have to work the dating in there. Get to know the person. It's, it's not just, oh, well, this person seems okay. He'll do. I'll let him tie me up. Sure, I'll move in tomorrow. Take your time to get to know the person. So get out there. Go to the munches. Go to the parties. Go to the demonstrations. Get to know people. The more people you know. And you know, you may never go to all these places and, and meet someone. It may never happen. But when you go to these places and you cast your net out and you're talking to people and you're meeting new people, you may meet that one person who travels around and says, you know what? I know the perfect person for you. So just because you don't meet someone out at these events, once you get out there and you you start mingling and you get to know people and don't go for the sole person purpose of saying hey I'm going to go meet my master I'm going to go meet my slave I'm going to find the person that's just right for me go with the mindset that I'm going out to have a good time I'm going out to see something different I'm going out to learn something I'm going to go meet some new people perhaps make a new friend then if you you make some friends you make meet some new people you have the chance of finding someone for you. Not everyone's going to be a love connection, but make some good friends. And good friends often know other good friends that may be the right person for you. So there's a million ways. And you never know. You Just because you're in a vanilla setting does not mean that person is not submissive or not dominant. You can kind of see these things and tell. How you tell, it's, it's like with Fenton Glass and... and when I first started out, you know, working with antiques and dealing in them, when I used to do that, you know, my question was, well, you know, because Fenton was like all the rage. Everyone went Fenton. And you can look it up. It's really beautiful glass. They make faces and lamps and, you know, candy dishes and all that. And I asked the person, well, how do you know? And she says, you just know. But once you look at Fenton and you see it, you'll know what she's talking about, which I know doesn't make any sense. But it's kind of like that. You can just sense these things. So we're going to go to a couple more songs. And I have one last thing to talk about when we get back. And I'm going to leave the suspense up to you. But I think you will kind of guess the topic by the songs. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the Beaten Path. So I'm guessing you all figured it out. The last little topic we're going to um, be talking about is can you marry your dominant, your submissive, your slave, your master, your mistress, whoever is in your life. 
of course you can. We're not aliens. And then people ask, but isn't the, the collar the same difference as having a wedding ring? Well, yes and no. You know, a collar is, is very significant and it symbolizes a deep commitment that you've put in the other person. It symbolizes that you've agreed to serve only them. Well, sometimes, you know, they'll let you serve other people and stuff, but it does symbolize a very deep, thought, well thought out commitment. But some people, that's enough. Some people that says, we are committed, we're lifetime mates, the caller says it all. The caller says, said it all. But some people want more. Some people want an actual marriage. And everyone's different. And I think one of the mistakes that's that's made within the BDSM lifestyle or that outsiders make and that some people coming in make is that there is no serious connection between a master slave, a dominant, and it's his submissive. That there's not the same love feelings, that there's there's nothing deep in connecting there, which is the absolute opposite. I've found that when there is a good master slave, mistress slave, dominant submissive relationship, that the bond is actually much stronger than vanilla. We make a conscious effort to keep communication open. We have to be extremely honest in all that we do. It's kind of like our um, oh general guidelines that um, XPD was talking about. We have general guidelines in the community, but there is no one right way to do BDSM. So if you want to get married, get married. Have a ceremony. Have the ring. You know, you can still have a family and children. It's not... You, it's not that you cannot do these things, that you cannot have love within your BDSM relationship. It is very possible to have it all. To have the kink, to have the parties, to have the home, to have the life, to have the love. It's all possible in a BDSM relationship and it's also very meaningful. So you can have a ring, you can have a collar, you can have anything you want in this lifestyle it's very rich and very meaningful and what you choose to get out of it and what you choose not to get out of it is all up to you and I hope that all our listeners will have a lifetime filled with love filled with joy filled with caring filled with everything good that there is because we all deserve to have a little love in our life. And where we get it from is up to us. When we accept, decide to accept it is up to us. But we all deserve it. I want to thank Ear for tuning in. And I also want to, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this wrong. I'm not sure if it's Caddy or Katie for tuning in. But thank you so much. I have one last song and then I'm going to come back and say goodnight to everyone and let you know what's coming up in the future weeks for those of you that just tuned in. I didn't want you all to be disappointed that there was no Gary Newman tonight. So we're going to leave off with Gary Newman for our last song and I'll be back in just a moment. Here we go. Welcome back to Slave Nation on the beaten path. Of course, we had to throw in some Gary Newman. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Now, you know the schedule's all up on the Beaten Path page. And we have Pixie the Pirate. I'm not sure. she. I think she comes on Saturdays at 8 in the morning. I'm not sure. I tuned in once. I would love to tune in in her show because what I did tune into, she had some very excellent music. And she just has an excellent presence and great voice and just high energy and really, really wonderful. But... She's on very, very early in the morning, and I just don't wake up that late unless I have a really bad night of sleep and I don't sleep at all. But if you get the chance, check out the schedule and absolutely turn into Pixie the Pirate. Now, everyone knows Trev, Harry Trev, his rock show is on Fridays, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. 
For those in the West Coast, we're just getting ready to go out for our hot Friday nights and have a great time. I often take a shower first and I do my makeup and get dressed while listening to his music and I'm dancing around and having a grand old time and it really gets me going for a night of fun. It's great for a Friday night show. Get ready. Go out. Have, have a great time. Yitzi is on sporadically. You don't know when his show is coming. But next week I'm having Jillian Keenan, Keenan on. And if all goes well... He'll be doing a show ahead of me. So he'll be doing a show and then there'll be about an hour break and then I'll come on and we'll have Jillian, Jillian on for an interview. She's a spanky. She's an author. She's really awesome. So look for Yitzi's shows. He posted them on the Beaten Path page on FetLife to let you know when he's coming on. He plays music from all over the world. He has a great knowledge about different bands and rock music it's really great tune in to him and then you all know kiss king comes on sporadically also he doesn't announce it he just comes although you can pretty much count on him during the holidays he usually does something special for everyone puts that little effort in to make everyone feel special and like they have some place to come and and they do the beaten path is open for everyone to come in and tune in and join in and it's kind of a little family here and we, we you know we love your ideas we love your suggestions and you just if there's anything you want to tell any of us you know how to get a hold of us and of course you can always get a hold of me at slave nation radio at gmail.com request suggestions ideas guests you'd like to have on I'm always happy to hear it and I want to I would thank everyone for tuning in and everyone's hard work to get the station up and going and promoted it can't be done without listeners and work from everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you all next week.